It's here, the relaunched Paxter 70 from Risa Mula. This is the October 2022 edition. As you can see, it says it's a test ride. So I have been testing it for a couple of days. Uh, prior to this, I was testing the Load 75 for a couple of weeks. So I'll be giving a comparison between the two. You just saw it for yourself. My son was super engaged and super happy to be sitting in the front of the Paxter. He was dying to climb into it. Very different experience from the Load 75. Because the driver of the Paxter and the child are able to be so close, it facilitates dialogue as you travel through your world with your kid sitting in front of you. In the Load 75, the distance between me and my son, it just felt much larger. And because he was sunken lower, closer to the ground, there just wasn't as much engagement, even without the rain cover on. Because of the depth on the Paxter 70, you can stack really high, which makes you feel like you're putting a ton more into the bike. I was able to pack a pram, my dog, my kid, and my backpack all into the Paxter 70, no issue. Um, I actually couldn't fit all of those elements comfortably into the Load 75. The other thing about the Load 75 to point out is that because the child, if you get the, the two seat version, because the kid is essentially laying down from the waist down, then all of the stuff you're trying to shove in to the cargo area is going to collapse onto the kid, which my son really did not like. When I put all the stuff in with him in the Paxter 70, because of the depth and his ability to sit up, he did not complain at all. Ultimately, the Load 75 is an amazing bike and it's super fun to drive, narrow, nimble, light. However, in my life, the Paxter 70 better fits what I need to do, which is drag stuff around an urban environment. Although the cargo boxes on each model are comparable for weight, I would suggest that when we put myself, my son, and my dog in the front of the Paxter, it was still like I, we could go for a ride like that. Um, I really could not see one adult, one child and a dog in the front of the load 75 due to the flat bottom. The seat belt for kids in the Paxter 70 does feel quite premium. It has a nice little foam and lots of adjustability, notably around the shoulder area for the kids. And also you can open the base with one hand. Regarding the Load 75, I don't know where they found this clip, but it is so bootleg and out of the back alleys. You can see me here trying to undo the clip with one hand, which isn't even possible. You have to use both hands. Today's ready. Uh, so we're going to start. And then it just drags along the ground. So you have to get your foot out. You got to go like that. That may not seem like a big deal, but when you have to do it every time you want to stop, it actually is quite annoying. So you literally can just push. And then it will, the whole thing will just stop. Like that is so convenient. And then push forward, bop, bop, and it just pops up by itself. Definitely a Paxter Plus. As you can see here, I have stopped the Paxter 70 and I want to put the back wheel lock on. And with the Paxter, you can easily move the spokes back and forth in case the Avis lock is blocking the way a little bit. Um, this is really different from the Load 75 where, like I swear, it felt like half the time the lock and the spoke were not in alignment. And sadly, you have to like lift up the whole back wheel and shift it a bit to get the spoke out of the way, which is incredibly annoying. Given that the Load 75 provides the display in the middle of the handlebar, and it's a larger display than on the Paxter, I much preferred this to the Paxter. A notable difference for me in an urban environment where things do get stolen was that the battery in the Paxter is built into the bicycle frame on the bottom there. So it means that for someone to get it out, 
I'm sure there's a way, but the, it feels safer because the battery is so much less exposed than on the Load 75, where it's literally just hanging out and like a guy with a crowbar could rip it off. From a security perspective, call me absolutely crazy, but I found that with the Load 75, my laptop in my red backpack was much more exposed, and I was much more worried that when I came to a red light, that some crazed homeless person would just grab my backpack and run away, and I would be struggling to get that darn kickstand in place to run after them. With the Paxter 70, I felt much more confident at red lights that no one could look in easily from a distance and weigh up where my laptop was and what to steal from me. I would suggest that the power entry point on the Paxter is um, very pretty. However, it is also a massive risk for toddlers who like to open and close things. And I would expect that that little flap will not stand the test of time. It's, it doesn't feel very sturdy and my son can yank anything off. Um, the Load 75, I don't even know where the front port to charge is because it was never an issue. If you want a rain cover, I would strongly recommend focusing on the Load 75. The rain cover that came on the Paxter, no matter how you adjust it, because you can kind of make it go higher or lower in the back, it interferes with the steering, with the brake. One great thing about the Load 75 rain cover is that because it goes above the handlebars, it actually protects your hands from the wind, which keeps you warmer. One notable difference is that the Paxter has this great pocket where you can dump sunglasses, you can dump your lock, anything that you need to have easily accessible as the driver. And on the Load 75, there's no equivalent feature to this. And Risa Miller doesn't put this as a bonus, but underneath there is a great hiding place. Turning like sharp corners in this Paxter versus the Load 75, I do think I have a shorter turning circumference in the Paxter than I did in the Load 75. It You'll notice that in the handlebar here, there's a measurement um, like reader there in white font on the black handlebar. So you're always able to understand like the height that works for you as a rider, which would be extremely useful if you, there's more than one person riding the bike. Um, the Paxter 75, from what I can recall, does not have those centimeters measured out. Okay, there are two elements about this bike and the Load 75 that I think Risa Müller has really gotten wrong, and I would love to feedback that they improve this for the next <laughs> edition. The first is to think, okay, you're spending between 8 and 12 grand on this baby, and how are people going to know you're coming when you take up the whole space? This must cost 5 euros. Like, this is an abomination. Guys, you've got to improve upon that. It's just crap. Like, I think Urban Arrow gives you this massive bell that really, like, it sounds like the right bell for the bike you're driving. Um, so that was number one. And number two feedback, this. First off, there's no consistency. So on the Load 75, we had one where you actually had to leave the key in, but this version, you can take the key out. I think that Risa Mueller just, whatever they have in stock, they just chuck on to their bikes last minute. So do you get one with the key that comes on and off or one where the key stays on? I think it might be a Russian roulette, um, but it would make sense that the Paxter, a bit more of a family bicycle, has the key that's removable um, because there might be multiple adults using it more likely. I don't know. Um, but this is just not very high quality and it just, it doesn't feel like the same level as the rest of the bike and when you're using this for a while like i think today for example i've probably been riding for about an hour and a half my hand right in here does begin to hurt so i would honestly recommend wearing a glove okay rm Regarding the safety belt, competitors in this price point have really awesome magnetic closures. You know who I'm talking about. Please start getting those on the Paxter and stop using this old-fashioned clippy clip. 
this whole tour versus eco versus turbo, I can just imagine a room of male product bike enthusiasts at Bosch who were like, yeah, we're gonna do sport and turbo. Guys, please rename this. Just utilize the actual percentages of battery power versus human power for each level and call it a day. I hope you liked my review of a comparison of the two. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a like. Thanks so much. Raji, what's your feedback? A custom dog bed for the front. A quick point about the bike uh, step pedal. What do we call this? Kickstand. A quick. An important point to note is that I know nothing at all about bicycles.